Medianoche. 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 The eyeball man looks is like a giant microphone, like a giant microphone head that <laughs> yeah. I'm looking right at, and I don't even see your face, just the, the top half. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna like move it around so you can see me. Um, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Medianoche Podcast. This is episode 27. Yeah, I'm here with uh, a, a good friend of mine that I've known for how long? Have I known you for already? Damn, man, it's been a, it's it's been such a long time since like since back in G's. Yeah, when. I, they, I want to say close to a decade already. It's crazy how time goes, man. <clears throat> but, um, yo, yeah, I know it's been a minute since the last time I did an episode. I've been working on music, doing some life stuff, you know. Um, but we're back at it, man. We're getting getting this episode on, on and popping. I'm here with Charlie Fast. What's up, brother? Charles Fast in a place to be, Vice City Cypher. I'm doing all right, man. I'm, I'm, I'm living life. I'm uh, taking care of business. I'm uh, taking care of the fam. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what more can I say, man? I'm freaking. I, I I love to be doing more uh more creative stuff and creating. And and creating, but yo, know, I don't know, man. We only have so much time on this earth, and during the day. Yeah, man. But I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm I'm very thankful for for where I'm at and what the Lord has blessed me with. You you know how you say that, like uh, you wish that there was more time on earth, man. Like I wish there was more time in a day. Yes, absolutely. Like if, if I had if I had like a good maybe three hours, if if one day was like twenty seven hours, those three hours I could be able to do so much more with, you know. Like I, I think, I I just want to say that if we had three more hours during the day, we would find stuff to fill it in. Oh yeah, I can go to the bank real quick, and oh yeah, well, I I still gotta go food shopping. And we, yeah, it, it's just gonna end up being like twenty four hours. Right, and right. but only it would be twenty seven hours, and we wouldn't even know the difference. I'm just saying because like I like to do like to I like to do to do list. That's like my thing, you know. Mm. Like on my iPhone, on your notes, you know, you can long press on a note, and it'll give you an option to pin a note to the top. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And I, I I only recently discovered that, mm. but like now I have my daily to do list, and like I'll just kind of like be banging things out. And yeah. like lately, I've been I've been getting overbooked with things and plans and commitments with people. Yeah. So like yeah, I feel you, man. I wish that I had more time so I could equally distribute my aspirations. You know. Yeah, man. A big thing is uh, is overcommitment and uh, trying to make other people happy, and so you over. I don't know. Like you, you commit to doing stuff to other people, and I don't know, man. It's a balance of saying yes and no. Yeah, like, like for example, today, like today, I. I just turned my phone off, man, and I just passed out. I had I haven't been really getting too much sleep in the last like it seems like over a week now. Mm. I haven't really been getting much sleep. I'll sleep maybe two hours, three hours a day, and like you might not be used to it, but like once you force yourself to get out of bed and get get popping with whatever plans you are that you have. Let's say someone comes over and they knock on your door, mm -hmm. and like you let them in. These like internal like this sense of urgency is gonna come over your body mm. and you're gonna wake up even though you've only had like two hours of sleep three hours of sleep mm -hmm. but your full battery is gonna burn out like eight hours from now you know what I mean? So. I I agree. Uh, getting rest is very important, if not the most important thing. At the same time, we we're creative people. We we tr we're trying to create our own little universe and 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 product and and things to move our agenda forward and what really excites us but we gotta rest yeah <clears throat> yeah man like do you remember how popular it was some years ago when it was like team no sleep ah oh, not team no team sleep no i don't get tired like kevin gates you know and it's like fool you absolutely do <laughs> like like don't even act like man sleeping is the best man you know what i'm saying like i love it it's just too much of anything is bad you know like sometimes in my music i'll 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 like write about little dreams that i have you feel me i feel like that little aspect of our lives 
is so important yet it's almost like shunned on to like speak on how how good it is to experience it you feel me and hmm. because they everything is about being active being how much what did you do today you know oh hmm. i did this 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 and that but no one ever wants to talk about how good they how good that nap was you know because it makes them seem like they're like falling behind on their trajectory you got to listen to your body man and and sure it's easy to say oh yeah i don't get sleep but i don't i don't need sleep or whatever i mean maybe when you're younger but your body needs sleep. Your, your your body needs rest. Your brain needs to shut off for a bit, and it's still active. But yeah, it's important. It's is it's the most important thing to maintaining clarity and and being a healthy human being. Aside from you know what you would take to into your body from what you eat and stuff or whatever, you need to you need to rest your mind. You need to rest your body and do nothing. I have this idea that like. I mean, I, I may sound crazy to people that actually study study sleep or whatever. Like, you know how people sound crazy when they speak on things that you know a whole lot about and they're just speculating? You know what I'm saying? Mm. But, like, I have this weird theory, man, that, like, when you pass out and you enter into dream mode, that your dreams are, like, other dimensions that you are catching a glimpse of, you know? Mm. Like, there are things that happen in in, in my dream world that, like... It makes no sense to me why I am experiencing this like imagery. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if like, you know, if when I die and I and I see God and I'm like, Yo, God, let me ask you a question. You know, can I pull up a chair? And it's gonna be like a golden chair. And I'm gonna be like, Yo, God, what's up? What's up with these? What's up with these dreams, man? These dreams are crazy. Are they just my imagination, or am I looking at something in another realm or something? And if he tells me that, you know. That that's exactly what dreams are, man. I'm gonna be so gra- it's gonna be so gratifying, you mm-hmm. know. I'd be like, yeah, you, you you were looking at yourself in universe A three one square, you know. Mm. Yes, that is kind of crazy. I will say that the depths of our mind is like, I don't know, man. We have it's like we have universes in our minds, and we we like I don't know if we create like I mean I don't know, man. The creative mind, the creative spirit. I don't know. I I hear that uh, that people that do um, like uh, psilocybin mushrooms or whatever Mm -hmm. that they like like uh, sure it makes you relaxed or whatever, but you close your eyes and then it's like you 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 enter into a different dimension or whatever. Like depending on how much you do, whatever. I've never done like like that create that crazy extent or had that experience, but. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, like I, I'm just v- very interested in in the subject, and uh, I don't know, man. It's it's like you you go into your mind, and it's like a limitless world. Let me know, man. If you uh, you know, if you ever want for the sake of science, you know, <laughs> if ever you just want to put on the Slim Shady LP and just uh, grab a handful. I took three. She had the other twenty two caps. You know, as long as we're not like like uh, talking to plants. You feel me? I'm down to experiment with. The psyche, <laughs> the psyche. Hey, man, the, the plants might have some. The plants have things to say. Yeah, <laughs> maybe they might. You know, I saw on the internet, man. Like this lady, uh, she. I mean, mind you, it's a video, so you could, you could believe it for what the video shows you, or you can just be like, ah, oh, somebody just put music on the audio track and just made it seem like what you're watching is genuine. But some lady put like these pads on the leaves of some flower and started to record. I guess like the noise that comes out of. The leaves or something and apparently it sounds a lot like they're like musically just expressing themselves these plants you know mm. and like it's just crazy when you start to, you know I'm, uh, mind you i'm not too well well like knowledgeable on this topic so i kind of sound like an idiot trying to describe it but you know they put these like pads on the leaves of different flowers i think it was like a sunflower mm-hmm. and they started to record the type of stuff that comes out of it, or I guess mm. on some on some frequency, and like it's crazy how the noise, you know, that these plants are like expressing themselves with, and that's why I'm like maybe someone just put an audio track just to you know make it seem like it's something that it's not, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, man. You're saying these mushrooms have something to say, and I and I believe it. You feel me? Yeah, man. Like I don't know, man. It's like the plants. I'm I'm sure if you have like a a, a soundproof room and you're able to capture what the sounds that uh, of these plants growing and stuff uh, i wouldn't be surprised that if it's like on a 
I don't know, man, like a pattern of uh, of just growing or whatever that a uh, 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 a definable pattern that and then like what's music? Music is like a definable pattern that we've like harnessed and. I, I I can I, I can imagine aliens coming down here and saying what's this music thing or whatever like I don't, that that we're so fired up about and it's like this freaking crazy wave that we uh, that we produce or whatever uh, synthetically and then we all and we share it and some of it like gets uh, gets played by many people and I don't know man it's or like or like or like what if aliens came down and they're like y'all still on music we got over that. <laughs> A thousand, a uh, hundred thousand years ago. Now we're just into this thing. Like we just stare at each other, and like our mind just goes crazy. It, yeah. I mean, uh, it's it, 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 it's just crazy, man. We we absorb the information of music through our ears, and I, that's how we that's how we receive it and enjoy it or whatever. But it's like these are like slices of information. Like the, the the waves that go up and down or whatever, like slices, pieces of information that uh, that are played in a sequence, and somehow it it like it, it communicates something, man. It, it, it yeah, I I don't know, man. I mean, music is strange or whatever. If you really think in depth into it, you know, um, like on on my first mixtape, twelve a.m. I have you know I did a freestyle over um. That song "Man on the Moon" by Kid Cudi, mm -hmm. and like I had this one line in there because, like, for those that don't know, like my my version of the "Man on the Moon," I'm speaking on from the perspective of an alien that fled from his home planet, mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, he yeah. wanted to come to Earth, but he crashed on the moon, and now he's the man on the moon. You feel me? And he's like looking at Earth, like, man, y'all look like I wonder what makes y'all humans tick. From here, y'all look like lunatics, you know. You remember? <laughs> that, I mean, that's like one of one of uh, one of my wife's uh, favorite tracks. Yeah, uh, one of the first ones that I'm like, yeah, check out my homie Art Marrera, and then that's like one of the defining songs or whatever that that somebody could say like, damn, though, this guy could write, and this guy, this guy like can can like communicate in his words and his rhythm and pattern and 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 ideas or whatever like on some next level. Not just you know on this average rapper thing, but like damn, dog. like that guy has some talent. Thanks, man. Shout out to your wife, man. She's cool, you know. <laughs> like uh, every time that I would go over to your <laughs> to your crib, y'all were always like so welcoming, like y'all are good hosts, you know. Um, but the reason why I brought up that freestyle is because like there was this one line there that I you know I was like, oh, I might as well take a moonwalk like Michael Jackson. Yeah, I was a big fan of him back in my, my home, home planet, planet. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like. For Michael Jackson's music to the, the the sound wave of his music to travel across space and eventually get to like another planet, like their satellites pick up on this signal. You feel me? Mm. It's like, damn, whoever this is, I like it. You know, oh, this guy's name is Michael Jackson, some alien planet. You know, because like there are some satellites in space. Some time ago, I watched it on you know, on TV that like they would pick up on radio signals that have been broadcasted from earth like in the 80s or 70s mm -hmm. that those signals just like traveled you get me or some something like that and that's what inspired that line so you know who knows man like who knows like like how far the music that we make mm -hmm. or our voices truly travel you know in waves into the universe and see if it comes back void or not like like when i was up on the mountain in california like you would be on the mountain and on the base of the mountain, like some people would have like cows and stuff. But in, in the middle of the night, you would hear those cows, like their moos, mm. like they were right at, right outside of where you're sleeping because <laughs> like the voices travel. Mm. You know? and, and I'm sure it's like a deep, it's like a deep frequency. And so it's going to like travel farther. Yeah. Like that, then just like the high pitched short frequencies that yeah. go up and down real quick and like a <laughs> yeah yeah I'm I'm gonna make like the same way that Run the Jewels did Meow the Jewels yeah I'm, I'm gonna do it with just moves yeah for the eight oh eights Moo the Jewels or yeah. Moo Moo AM or what <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying like yeah bro like frequencies bro they travel really really far man like when when I did this uh open mic here at this hotel mm -hmm. um one of the things that it didn't occur to me how heavy it really was was my subwoofers for like the speakers because mm -hmm. i have two 12 inch speakers and two subwoofers right from behringer mm. and 
I had to turn the subwoofers down because like you can walk almost a block away and still feel the rumble from like the bass, you know? And yeah, like in the in the late eighties, that would have been wonderful. <laughs> like just sticking in the back of your car and you boom, boom, like some Miami bass. Yeah. I don't know. I you, go. Are you gonna put like some subwoofers in your car? I don't know, man. I I don't know if I should. Uh, another thing is like it's a money thing. I already freaking spend all this all this money on it. Maybe I I, I would really like to have a, a like a really dope uh, speaker system or whatever in the car to like really get a full a fuller experience. What I have now is good. I I think that there's a that there's a, an upgrade that's that's possible. Um, just j- just to shoot back to what we were talking about in the man on the moon, the like a. Uh, the way I interpreted like the the track, and maybe I just missed something in the beginning of it or whatever. I I always like thought of it as like you're you're uh, like a, a man from Earth, and but in like a space traveler, and you ended up onto the moon or whatever. And when you're saying uh, like Michael Jackson, I was a big fan of him back fan of him back in my home planet, and like his home planet would be Earth that he came from or whatever. Mm. And then you're like waving to and you're like you're, you're waving to to the people that you left or whatever oh. and, and and that they they're not waving back because they're like oh you know art whatever but you're freaking taking off and you're like on the moon and like maybe even continuing going further but how many people actually reach it to the moon i don't know man <laughs> that's hard man <laughs> that's tight it goes to show man how like music can somewhat be interpreted in subtle differences but like you know like you thought that i was speaking from the perspective of me leaving earth when i wrote it from a perspective of an alien leaving his planet coming to earth you know i, I wanted to get, pick a hot spot so i pick, i found earth and aimed for the equator you know like he was heading to earth but then he crashed on the moon you know but yeah, man, uh, that's tight, bro. Like, I still, every now and then, I'll go back to that mixtape and I'll just kind of enjoy it. Like, I sounded so much younger then than I do at the moment, you know? Like, you you and I were talking about, like, I showed you this track that I made. And, like, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, your voice kind of, like, comes off a certain way. Remember how you were talking about that? Mm-hmm. And, like, it's funny because I'll, I'll go back and I'll listen to, like, that 12 a.m. mixtape. And I sound almost completely different, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's funny hey, how that works. That's the progression. That's uh, growing, growing from a seed into like something greater. Yeah, like yeah. like a, a seed. A tree is no longer a seed. It was a seed, but now it's like something greater, something different, something that that gives. You know, like there are some artists, man, that they've been able to maintain the way they sound throughout throughout like their entire career. Like, mm-hmm. and it's fun. It's like we don't know how they sounded prior to their debut album, but like. They've somehow just been able to just make, they found their little pocket, like Aesop, you know? You listen to Aesop Rock on Labor Days or like the Daylight EP, mm-hmm. and then you hear The Impossible Kid, and it's like, it's Aesop, you know? Mm-hmm. Same thing with like Jadakiss or, you know? I, I think although he, he he's definitely evolved, he's like Pokemon evolved <laughs> into like something different and like re- more refined like like you've been freaking you're creating this this liqueur or whatever and you're distilling it or whatever and then i don't know throughout time it like gets better and 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 you don't you don't uh get those uh like from the early days uh, things that might be considered uh, i don't know weaker as an mc or just like more wordy or, or more superfluous like extra that didn't, didn't need to be there but as he got as he ages he's like uh like filtered out and then so you get like such a a, a pure uh lyrical experience or whatever like i remember uh, uh a big bang off of uh not labor days uh float oh man i love fucking float so i heard y'all want to float, float. Yeah. Z- 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 nah, that that bass oh man that that's the first time i i, I ever experienced aesop aesop rock for our listeners out there uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'm not saying anybody else uh I, I i went to it was churchill's and then lp was supposed to to perform there and i was like oh shit dog, freaking lp hell yeah i'm gonna go see lp and that's i was like a huge fan of funk crusher plus like i played play it obsessively I, everything every any record that that i have whatever i play obsessively 
That's why I don't get into a lot of other newer stuff or whatever. So I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I'm going to go to this thing or whatever. And then all these people call Cannibal Ox. All right, whatever. You know, cool. Oh, this guy, Aesop Rock. All right. You know, I don't know who he is. And then LP doesn't show up to the event. I'm like, ah, oh, man, this is going to be a waste of time. Because I was like a huge fan of LP. I didn't know anybody else. I was like, what? I'm, I'm not going to leave. <laughs> How am I going to leave? I was like, no, I'm, I'm going to go in. And this is when... uh in the in the in the pro fresh days or whatever I, I think h was out there definitely rudy goblin was out there yeah shout out rudy goblin shout out Ru rudy goblin doing his thing man freaking doing it incredible b-boy stuff and mc stuff and uh yeah man I, i'd love to do something with him but um so we were talking me and rudy goblin um and then like in the middle we were in the middle of the crowd uh, and then i saw him and we and and we just freaking started uh started talking crap back and forth or whatever and then uh a, uh, Ace comes on with freaking float, and then uh, and then he's just freaking flowing like one after the other. These lines, I was like, "Holy shit, who is this guy?" And he's like, "Oh, that, oh, that's Aesop Rock." And then like before that, he, uh, uh, the announcer's like, "Yeah, we got Aesop Rock," and Aesop Rock is sitting on the like like lackadaisically on the stage in the back, and he's like, eh, he just waves his hand or whatever. <laughs> 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 very very uh un, un epic i was like oh who the hell is this guy whatever and then he 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 starts with float i'm like holy shit and then at the end which i i wish the the chorus he would have done it twice or three times but maybe doing it the one time at the end was was like the perfect way to do it because i float when everyone around me's busy drowning i float when everyone around me is busy drowning, I float. Oh, man. And then, like, just the just the cadence and just his voice and stuff, I was like, holy shit. And I was, like, a, just a huge fan from that day. Um, but, yeah, man, we, we were definitely talking about Ace and his progression and the Impossible Kid. Brilliant. I, I mean, all the al albums are brilliant. I love Bazooka Tooth. I love Labor Days. I feel like he's found, like, he's found an, an amazing pocket of... Being able, because he's known for his vocabulary, yeah. you know, his his a uh, creative speech, yeah, and then like a uh, uh, way above average uh, vocabulary. But I feel like the impossible kid, he's found a way to be much more under understandable, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like on Apple Music, you can read the lyrics, mm -hmm. like it has it on in Apple Music, you know. Mm -hmm. And like the old, it's still Aesop, like it's still very much that the way that he writes. I, you know? I, I think he he just made it he's made it more digestible for the average more average human being, but at the same time it's so potent, yeah. and just the ideas that he comes across, and then the the pictures that he paints with his words, and uh, man, I, and like back in the day, like in the in the float days, the choruses be like mad wordy, like like uh, um, not nine to five or anthems, uh. No, no, I know what you mean. It, like, it, like, it was like real wordy, and and like one for one of one of the 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 choruses, like he couldn't even like. I mean, he could do it live, but to do it like like four like four times in a row, like mad quick or whatever, like you're not gonna be able to hold your own breath. It was more like showing off the the, the lyrical ability, but not necessarily uh, uh, for the ease of 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 being able to repeat it himself, like or even fans being able to repeat it himself. It's just like. Just to show how blown out of out of like the water he he would he would do to the average person uh, lyric wise and vocabulary wise. Yeah. Anyways. Nah, like it, like writing music. Sometimes writing music is not. It's like this song is not meant to be performed live. This song is meant to be listened to. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like or, or or like a, you know, for example, trap music. Like trap music drums. Like there was this guy that uh. <laughs> It was like, yo, let me show you. Like, you'll play like an old beat, and he'll beatbox that beat. Like, he'll beatbox it, you know. Mm -hmm. But then they play a trap record, it's like beatbox that, and he's like, uh, you know, the hi hats. Like, how can I? <laughs> yeah, how can I just do all these crazy ass? Because they'll have like four or five different layers of hi hats and different pitches and stuff overlapping each other. And it's like, it's like this music is meant to be listened to, not meant to be recreated live. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you if you were to have a, a drummer on stage, like. This guy's not going to be able to mimic this. So, yeah. So, like, there are some music by Aesop Rock that it's the same thing, you know? And I think even doing it live with drums or whatever, something like that, it's, it's maybe it'll be on the same feel and the same frequency. Not exactly the same thing, but it's like something else now, which is, I guess, beautiful in itself as long as it's done well. 
and like you mentioned uh uh that show at church hills um you know like i had my man ed here a few episodes ago he took he also was there you know he said that aesop was playing his music out of a cd player you know <laughs> It was that the same show, like, or do you recall I, that? I don't even remember. All I remember was I was talking to Rudy Goblin in the middle of the stage, kind of like yelling into each other's ears, and then this tall ass, uh, the ace is like freaking six five, six six, so taller than me. I'm a mere, a meager six <laughs> two, <laughs> and and uh, and that that's what I remember about him. I don't even remember any any of the other tracks that that he played. All I know is I was just blown away, and and uh, float the track float freaking was what started it. And I was like, nah, I'm, a, I'm a fan from here on out. Also, I will say that uh, Cannibal Ox was there, and Serum and Source Spoken actually performed. I don't know who else from like the Pro Fresh, Pro Fresh uh, crew or, or like that from those days performed. But I remember uh, Serum and uh, and and Source Spoken uh, uh, performing like before or whatever, which is kind of dope. And uh, and Source goes to me, he's like, "Yo, homie, uh, we're we're having a, a little get together, a little after party thing. If you want, come over." And uh, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, why not or whatever." I, I, I'm, I don't remember if I went by myself or I went with H, but likely I probably went by myself. And I show up in fucking uh, vast air, and 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 da, the fu- uh, cannibal ox uh, is there, whatever, hanging out. And I was like, holy shit, these guys are fucking here. And then, uh, like, I I had this one track that I that I was working on or whatever, or that that I had done in in like Chicago, because uh, I I took a, a trip out there with the uh, with the homie uh, RNF uh, status and uh, my homie Ink from Gridlock way back in the days. We we. Uh, he he was uh the homie RNF. He uh he was putting together an album and then like he booked a studio up there or whatever. I don't know, I guess we just wanted to take a trip out there and then so like I uh I we recorded a track out there and I think uh, I I paid for it by doing like a mural or something <laughs> on the outside of the studio or whatever. And then I was playing it and uh and and the the homies from uh from Cannibal Ox were like, damn dog, yo, that sounds hard or whatever. I was yeah. Like, yeah, I was like, all right. I can imagine Vast there saying that. Yo, this track is very dope, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like Vast Air. I bought shout uh, out, shout out to Vast Air. Yeah, for sure, man. Like uh, Vast Air, man. Like uh, this 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 DVD that I bought on Amazon, uh, Revenge of the Robots, mm-hmm. the, the Def Jux documentary. Mm-hmm. Like my favorite wow. part. Yeah, like look, and this DVD is like jam packed full of stuff, man. It's like it has like the the tour documentary, but then it has the label documentary as well. And the label documentary is like my favorite part of the whole DVD because when it gets to that segment where like Vast Air is talking about Pigeon, the song Pigeon. Yeah, you know Pigeons. Uh, how does that start? He goes. Uh, birds, birds of the of same feather flock together, together congested on a majestic street corner. corner. Yeah. That's a that's a sometime for for most of them because most of them would rather expand their wings and, and turn over greater, greater things. things. That's what we call inspired flight by the pigeons that gotta eat pizza, pizza crust, crust every, every night. night. Yeah, let there be night and let there be light was understood. Uh, he was killing it on that pigeon, man. Whew. He was, man. Like I still bumped the cold vein, bro. Like, like some some of my favorite lines in all hip hop were on the cold vein. He's like, mm. he's like, what you figure that chalk Chucky outline on, on, on the, the ground, ground is a father, father figure? figure, or like, you was a stillborn baby, mama, mama didn't, didn't want, want you, but you, you were were stillborn. stillborn. <laughs> the, <laughs> and the way he delivers it, and then like with that voice. I don't know, man. It's classic vast air, duh. and LP on the productions. Holy shit! LP is one of those artists that I I appreciated more later on because when I was in high school and I was put on to underground hip hop, I was mm-hmm. put on to like the you know like like surface level underground hip hop is easily like you know your atmospheres, mm-hmm. your tech nines. You mm-hmm, feel me? Mm-hmm. But then once you start getting into like the Aesops, and then you get you go deeper into the rabbit hole, and then you discover that LP is mm-hmm. also like. An omnipresent contributor musically to all these guys. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know about his personal dealings or whatever, but man, what a. Uh, he's like a, a pioneer in opening the doors for indie rappers and white rappers to be accepted as like, yo, these guys are fresh. They're like, okay, white guys who rap dope can be fresh. Yeah. And he's and he's like been doing things since like the early since the mid nineties. Yo, he he the I 
I don't know if it was the Fun Crusher. I don't know if it was the very first album that they dropped, but they dropped it like on the same day as as Nas dropped his uh, his his first his his first track, Illmatic. I believe it was Illmatic. And then they like I don't know. I saw some video of them meeting up. Oh oh, uh, uh, Run the Jewels was doing some kind of thing that like in their in their early start or whatever. And I guess they were like gonna showcase some of their music or do a show or whatever. And Nas shows up, and then he they bring him to the front, and he's talking or whatever. And they're like, yeah, you know, our, our albums dropped the same day or whatever. And Illmatic, imagine that, dog. And and you're like, you're competing against Nas, Illmatic, the the fucking the 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 crown jewel of of one of the crown jewels of freaking hip hop. Uh, and he comes through, and he's like, yeah, I wanted to show a couple stuff. And so they like let Nas. Do, show a couple new tracks or whatever like for the people or whatever and i don't know man. i mean that's like some history like i don't know man and lp his evolution as a producer his evolution as a as a lyricist man i remember stepfather factory oh man you did you ever hear stepfather yeah, factory jobs for the community the latest in technology stepfather factory jobs for the community stepfather fact the age of chameleon industry bringing tomorrow's fathers today like and he put any the way he says it, he's like a carnival barker. Yes. That's like that's jobs for the community. Like fucking I, I can picture uh, uh Mitt Romney like like uh, talking like 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 with uh with uh Adolf Hitler hand gestures saying that he's gonna give jobs to all the people or whatever. And like uh, it was just like so beautifully ahead of its time and it damn, really was, man. man. And it, it like connected with me, like like I don't know, man. Like I, I never had the 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 greatest relationship with my stepfather. And then just like how he 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 holds you right there, like a uh, LP with his lyrics, he holds you in this feeling, and 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 like tells you a, a story like 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 how he freaking uh, growing up with his stepfather, and then like his stepfather like beating on his mom and stuff, and like just just crazy heartfelt like holy crap, dog, like just the emotion and 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 you know like what's created this monster of an artist and what's driven him to like greatness like yo I, i'm not i'm never going back to that or whatever i and then you know just like uh you know not even going to a college or whatever but dedicating himself fully into his art and and had, i don't know man like had a a, a a direction a clear vision of of like i mean i don't know i can't speak for him but he had a direction of what he wanted to do and then he just put all of his energy into it and freaking putting out records and and collaborating with people and and just being i don't know man i, I don't know if, if he really knew or thought of himself as like uh uh leading the way for a lot of rappers after him or whatever or if he's just like yo this is what i want to do and and this is what i'm going to do and then doing it or whatever and then I don't know, man. Freaking where, where, where he's at with Killer Mike today? It's like mind blowing to me because I've I've watched him from afar from Miami for for years, man. Like years and since since that Fun Crusher, and maybe that's not even really that that far back to him. Uh, but uh, no, nah, like I recall, he was also like one of the artists that was sketched on the cover of, like, of sound, like, sound bombing. Yeah, next you know? to, next to all those freaking legends, man. Freaking most Def Talib. I think uh, uh, Eminem's on there too. Eminem next to Eminem, like back in the days, right? It uh, goes to show that like that underground hip hop, you know, like the only reason why it is underground is because their approach on art is is more vague. It's more like obscure than you know a mainstream artist. You feel me? I was talking about that with Decal here when he was here. Like the album covers for underground artists are like paintings, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. And like for for like these stories of how Miami Miami has always been, uh, like in the loop of like a, a lesser known, very good m music. You know, like Church Hills being one of the staples of like you can come here and you know you can perform your shit here, and like you, you might not pack the house, but the people that are there are gonna be happy they attend that show ten years from now when you're where you're at in your career. Then you know, dog freaking Church Hills. What a place! <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I mean, they they definitely served their purpose in the music scene or whatever. But damn, man! Like, I I guess it's like meant to be, or just turned into this grungy like kind of atmosphere, or whatever. Where like the bathroom door is missing or whatever, and then like the 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 
like yeah there's the toilet and then like there's no door or it's torn in half or there's like a big hole in it or whatever <laughs> i mean and it's like oh yeah just leave it or maybe it was done like that on purpose or they just had too many fucking punk punk shows or something and destroying the place and oh yeah that's character <laughs> i don't mean i i don't even know mm. but I, i'm i'm definitely uh like, it, shit it, 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 it's been around man and and definitely legendary shows out there and the inspector would have a field day walking in there. <laughs> like, I mean, how does how does it, I, I don't I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, does the does the inspector not like travel to that part of the town? I I don't know. They'll just have do the inspector be like uh, also a member like a drummer of some punk band. <laughs> just walk in there and be like, yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. All right, awesome. <laughs> next, next Tuesday, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Word. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I want to see more of that in Miami. I want to see. I know that uh, there's a couple of venues here that are definitely like uh, more of what, like more venues that like you know are welcoming to like lesser known acts from out of from out of town because it's a lot of people um, that that perform here in Miami. Like for example, I've I've heard stories of like like the Ras Cash show. Like you know, people kind of in that tier of hip hop mm -hmm. that they don't like they don't pack the house. You know, and the, the promoter might be like, yo, this is not this is not worth it for me to keep a, like booking these artists that I'm not yeah, making yeah. so much as much money as I wanted to or even losing money. It's not easy, man. It's not it's definitely not freaking easy. And you, it's not like uh, I mean, I, I don't know, man, it's, it's a balance of like the promoter booking somebody who can bring out a crowd and also the artist uh counting on the produ on on the promoter to bring out the crowd for them i don't know man it's it, it's a balance man it's not easy and it's easy to, to lose money and if it's not i i don't know man it's it's hard to survive in that it's hard to survive and do well you know like i want one thing that i wanted to chop it up with you about like i don't know if i told you the story cuz it happened a few days ago but like all right, so to backtrack a little bit, so you, so you know I dropped this EP, it's a Good Grief mm -hmm, EP, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it has that Charlie Brown theme, mm -hmm. and it kind of came to me because I came up on these sneakers from a man's uh, Mowgli, like Mowgli, he's, you know, he was like like flipping some some used like Jordans and shit, and like, mm -hmm. like I'm kind of getting into the idea of like restoring some Jordans. It's kind of <laughs> like more of a therapeutic, like a passion project, you know? It's crazy, man. Yeah, because, like, you know, it, there's this brand called Reshuvenator, and, like, <laughs> like, you see, like, the before and after, like, this guy named Vic on YouTube, you know, he's, like, the main personality, the guy that rejuvenates, like, yeah. reshuvenates sneakers, and they come out looking damn near brand new, you know? <laughs> and I always wanted, I always wanted my Jordans, you feel me? Mm. And I never got them, and I missed out on all these releases from 2011 and 2008, you know? Of the retro threes or the whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So now I have them, but they need a little, you know, like a little... Rejuvenating? Rejuvenating, yeah. So then like one of the times that I came to get some of those sneakers, he also kind of like, he kicked down to me like these ch these uh, Charlie Brown vans, you know? Mm. And I'm like, word, that's cool. Are they so, yellow like that? Like like the yeah, Charlie Brown yeah, yellow? They're right behind you. You know what I'm saying? Like those sneakers right there. And... uh you, you see him, right? Like, yeah, I see him by the back. But. Yeah. So, like, you know, the Charlie Brown sneakers, right? Like, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And then, you know, and then Mac Miller passed away. You feel mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. And I was a big fan of Mac Miller for, like, mm -hmm. 10 years. Word. And, like, when someone dies, like, you grieve over their death. You feel me? It's a time mm -hmm. for grieving. But most people, they deal with death, like, like it, it's, it's very painful to just deal with that. Mm -hmm. So like when someone close to you dies, you grieve, and I was kind of hoping to put out some. I, I came to me to put out some music, just to kind of like you know in memory of Mac Miller. You mm -hmm, know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, and uh, and I connected those dots. I'm like, damn, you know, good grief. You know, let me help. This this music will help people grieve. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping will help people grieve like in a in a good way, like mm -hmm. good grief. You feel me? And mm -hmm. Charlie Brown has always been known to like fight the good fight. You feel me? In, yep. the, in the peanuts you know so so whatever right so i've been and these shoes obviously they're comfortable so i had to go to my my probation officer like a, a, a little bit more than a week ago and i'm wearing those shoes mm -hmm. and when you go to the probation officer's 
office, you're mm-hmm. in this waiting room full of a bunch of people on probation. They're stressed out. They're bickering. Mm-hmm. They're like, they have no consideration for everyone else in the room that they just want to be like venting out their their gripes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Man, my probation officer is taking so long. What the hell is going on? You know, imagine a room full of that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm like standing there waiting to get called, you know, mm-hmm. and this this other offender like walks in, you know, like this guy on probation. And like you can tell that he uh, like you can just you can just tell that he was one of these types of guys that they go in and out of prison and jail a lot. You can mm-hmm. just tell, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to get into detail of how you can tell. You just know, you know, and he walks by me and he's like. Yo, what shoes are those? I'm like, yo, these are Vans. And he's like, them shit's whack. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, them shit is whack, bro. He's just like laughing, laughing. Them shit is whack. And I know that, like, that type of, like, no filter, like, dis- like being disrespectful mm-hmm. is something that d- gets developed like when you're doing time, you feel me? Like when you're doing time and you want to, you want a problem with somebody. That's the way that you would, hmm. you know. So I'm just looking at this dude and I'm like, ah, I just laugh with him. You feel me? <laughs> like, ha, okay, that's cool. Cause I'm not about to violate my shit, my probation mm-hmm. over over some shoe sh- sh- comment. So look at how the universe works. Like right after, right. After that, like he laughs, I look up, my probation officer is there calling me to come in. And I'm mm-hmm. like, ah, great timing. And I just walk in there, I do my thing, and I leave. And I'm driving back to my spot, you know? And I'm like, man, some people, you know? Like, <laughs> like some people just like, you have to forgive them, you know? But right when I come back to this hotel, I'm walking to my room, and this other guy, he's like, yo, your shoes are dope. And I'm like, what? Thanks, man. And he's like, yeah, I, those, those are the best ones from the whole line of the Peanuts Vans releases. Mm. And then I saw on his arm, this guy, he must be from like Europe or something. Because this hotel, they have a lot of people from Europe, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, I'm a big fan of Vans. And you see on his on his arm, he actually has a tattoo of like. The Van logo? of Yeah, of a, the, the, uh, Van logo. sneaker. Yeah. Mm. And it's just funny how the universe works, you know. How like this guy is like, yo, them your shit's whack. And then another guy is like, yo, that shit's dope. So at that point, it's like, all right, you know, some people are not going to like what you're about. Some people are. So who do you pay attention to? Mm. You know, it's funny how the universe like just displays these little life lessons. You feel me? I think, I don't know. So let, let, let me, let me take it back to the guy in the, the parole, the, the guy waiting or whatever. Let's say they were the, the dopest, I don't know, $600 shoes or whatever, ever or whatever, that everybody can agree, oh, yo, these are dope shoes. <laughs> Do you think that uh, he would have he looked at him, oh, well, you know, what shoes are those? Oh, they're the, whatever, insert, fantastic brand, whatever, uh, this X brand, would he, would he have still been like, that shit's a whack? Or it would have been like, oh, yeah, dope, or, you know, whatever. Or, yo, give me those shoes. I mean, that, <laughs> what, like, okay, not. what was the motivation? Was the motivation just to, like, to, to announce his alpha maleness? Like, yo, shit's a whack. And see what, how you respond and, and to, to, to show his, his dominance or something? Or did he just not like those shoes? I don't know. Or, or maybe just a little bit of both. Like, but I know for a fact that, you know, at that, the moment that that happened... Like, immediately, I was like, not worth it, you know? That was like my immediate, like, instinctual response, like, not worth it. You know, you got to pick and choose what's yeah, more important, choose your battles. you Because know? if I were to have responded, then, you know, that would open up a whole can of worms that I'm not really trying to fish with, you know? Yeah, man. So. And that's, yeah, that even if you weren't, like, on probation or whatever, like with me... I'm not necessarily. I, I I can't afford to to be caught up with some foolish foolishness or whatever because somebody doesn't like my shoes and or is really trying to test me in in that sense and like yeah I don't know it, it would really have to have to take something for me to like like uh, put myself in a in a position where I could be fucking being been take away taken away by the cops or some shit like that 
Anyways, but yeah, uh, absolutely. You you pick and choose your battles. And I don't think, I don't think that I, I can't even imagine you on the back seat of a police officer's car. You know, I hope not. Like like just that image doesn't compute. You know, so good for you, man. Very good. Awesome. But yeah, man. Like the good grief. Like when you when I pulled up outside, I saw that you were like you were bumping it. What do you think of it? I I really like it, man. Six songs. It's five five, five records. Songs. I I I don't know, man. I, I really. I really like the direction. I think each song carries itself in its own direction, like, but still adheres to like a, a single like feel, single theme or whatever. Uh, I really like your uh, the the percussive flow on it, and uh, and just the ideas and and exposing yourself to being vulnerable to what you what you're going through and, and your life and being open. Oh, this is what's going on in my life. This is what I do. You know, I, I work in this hotel. I feel I, I, I work in the, in the front desk overnight. And, uh, and you know, I, I don't know, man, just like your, your whole, uh, everything, like the stuff that's going through your head and it's like refreshing in, in that sense. You know, like when you dropped your tape, sorry, I'm late. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember when I bumped it, I was like taken back by just uh, the energy, like in your tape, because most of the tracks are over. Are they most or all instrumentals? Like, are there some original tracks on there? Yeah, right. There's like it's like half instrumentals of like that I took from the internet or whatever. Yeah, like just blaze instrumentals or whatever, and then the other half were more uh, uh, of the original. Like uh, a few of them were, were some some tracks I did with the bench. Um, yeah, like like I th maybe. 40 45 percent of it i'm guessing was like original tracks or whatever or just like stuff that i, I don't know it, it was not necessarily like like cleared or whatever but just allegedly worthy of bringing together into a mixtape and and like releasing it into the wild uh like as a i mean really what, what i wanted from it was i mean for, I knew I wasn't going to be able to really capitalize off of it, but I wanted it as uh, a point in history that I could point back to so that when I meet people in, to, in the future, um, I'm not I, like, I don't know, like, like I feel like I, I, ha I, I will always maintain the MC mentality and, and think of things in like rhyme sense and like, I don't know, I'm fascinated by words and how you put them together. And then like, and what, when you could like, create like 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 a verse that makes sense and it's and it's uh uh, uh sequential or whatever and you keep on hitting it bah, 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 on on the syllables i i wanted it at the very least <clears throat> so that when i meet somebody in the future i can say yeah i, I released this in, back in 2016 I, I haven't really been able to put out much since then but i i really put in a lot of time and effort and and energy into it uh it was like a life goal uh maybe uh this universe and and this life doesn't have it for me to 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 do any more music i think that i i am going to be doing more music but at the very least god forbid if if i if i die tonight god forbid of course i have that as an accomplishment that people can jam to and my grandchildren and and uh uh like people into the future can can have this as something that proof that i existed and that I took and that I cared for the craft of, of rap, you know, the care and the, the craft of hip hop and not just like trying to make fucking tons of money doing some bullshit music. Man, if I die tonight, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be like in the afterlife, like what? I just did a song with what? My, I know, man, no one knows the password to my laptop. I got all this music, you know? Yeah, man, that's 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 a that's a, a different problem of uh we don't want like people going through our stuff and we encrypt it and, and we have all these freaking passwords and fucking 20, uh, 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 40 digit fucking passwords that are that are like in different uh, 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 different languages and shit or whatever, just so that nobody could guess it. But then you die and then what happens? So I don't know, man, you, you got to like write down or into and put in a safe like okay these are my passwords these are the instructions on how to get my stuff or whatever i mean and this is stuff that i think about like like uh like people with cryptocurrency or whatever if if they amass all like let's say they put a ton of money into it because oh it's the future or whatever but then you die and then nobody has that password or the hint or the 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 
the the private key or all, whatever all that stuff whatever it's freaking gone like there's no way you're getting it back unless and that goes into like next into like quantum computing and 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 uh, how long like to to like breaking uh passwords and stuff like that how long will it take using a quantum computer to freaking break a passcode and stuff i, I don't know man but that goes into a different direction or you just take it to the apple store and they're like just press a button yeah yeah, yeah we have the, we have the back door here yeah the back door key it's like a little scary <laughs> yeah technology right now where it's has a little funny like i don't like the fact that I have a conversation with somebody and then I go on Instagram and get an ad for something that I was talking about, you know? Yeah, man. Like there's like, uh, I don't know, man. I, I, from what I'm understanding, like the Facebook chat messenger or whatever, like has access to your microphone for whatever reason. And then they can listen up to freaking keywords and show you relevant ads or whatever. Like, I don't want you fucking listening to anything that a, a, a lot of people are, are like, turning away from using the Google engine, the search engine, and using DuckDuckGo. Uh, and DuckDuckGo is actually kind of blowing up where they don't track your wh whatever you're searching for or whatever. And it's got some other handy features too. But it's like, damn, I don't want to be advertised that. I don't want you recording my conversations. I don't want, I don't want you listening for keywords or whatever. Uh, I, I, I enjoy my privacy or I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to have some privacy or whatever. Uh, I don't know, man. It's 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 the new age. It's a new day, or whatever. And uh, just talking in front of, uh, in front of your phones or whatever. Like I heard Talib, Talib Kweli, he um, he he was listening to some speech or some something on 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 YouTube or something or whatever. And then it was like I, I don't know. I, this is like a. Uh, a paraphrasing or whatever but he was like in somebody's house they were playing the speech or whatever and then like uh i guess his phone picked up the the plane of that speech or whatever and then like he tried to to get a a plane ticket on like jet blue or something like that and they're like oh i don't know man what but like what it came down to was like they didn't allow him to travel on on this particular airline because he was listening to this particular speech or something or, or some shit like that and i'm like damn not like holy crap man i mean yeah it's uh it, um yeah i like you know if you know if you know how to work a search engine like let's say you want to look up something right and you know how to phrase what you're trying to look for so you search so you type it into google a certain way mm -hmm. to achieve the results that you're looking for you mm -hmm. know so like Yo, some of my search engine requests are like, if someone were to read them and think that this is how I feel, like, man, I would be looked at as like a pretty uh, fucked up individual, you know? But it's not that I feel this way. It's that I'm aware that this exists and I want to get some information on it, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, if 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 the way that you search certain things gets archived, I can totally see how people can perceive you a certain way that you mm -hmm. never really genuinely felt you just were trying to educate yourself on this or that you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's crazy bro like yeah we live in funny times it's pretty much like how it was to talk about in 1984 the book you know mm -hmm. yeah. um but yeah man i mean like but at the same time like you know to have an iphone there's i feel like there's a lot more benefits to having like a very uh you know uh, a device that's so small but you can utilize it for so much you know right in your pocket but i don't think that 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 the price to pay for that is your privacy or yeah i i agree but we've given away all of our inform all of our information all of our uh our going back in our correspondence our our uh our talking shit on facebook or whatever uh on uh uh talking about whatever politician that 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 you hate or like or whatever i mean you're giving it all the stuff away like to these huge companies that just continue to get more huge they're, they're, uh uh it's like a like a neural uh like a, a huge neural entity like a huge brain with uh electron like a neurons firing and, and like and it only gets bigger and we're the neurons that are firing that 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 uh that electricity and that information that gets fed and stored and then dispersed and then uh refed back to us or whatever we're fucking like batteries man yeah man <laughs> yeah it's wild bro like 
you know, bro, like you, what you said right now reminded me of something that like I always I always felt this way, but like I don't know if I ever talked about it on this podcast, but I have with a couple friends, like you know how on like the history channel, right? Or mm-hmm. like on the science channel, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, a network or whatever, like they'll have these guys, right? That they they go, Oh, we have discovered the shape of the universe and then you'll click on the, or you'll watch the video and it's like based on the distance between this star and that star we have speculated that the shape of the universe looks like this and then you'll see this like cgi video depicting on how the universe looks. is shaped and i'm just watching this and i'm like how the hell do y'all know this you know like how the hell do y'all arrive at this conclusion you and, know and where where is the, the universe placed like <laughs> All of this stuff, like how how do you, how can you tell the shape? I mean, is there one piece of like asteroid or whatever that's further further out that from like some big bang or whatever that like is that the the, the one point that you're like fucking uh, one of the points that oh yeah this is part of the shape and and then you do an outline of like all the little rocks and stuff that are still flying from opposite directions from a single point. I yeah, mean, it's like come on, bro. Like I mean, I don't know, but like mind you, like. I, again, I'm not, not I'm not too knowledgeable on this topic, but it's just I'm just a, a, a observing it from like a spectator's point of view. You know, it's like yo, y'all sound like you're making this shit up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Clickbait, man. It's like oh yeah, uh, we want it. We, uh, we know the shape of the universe, but look at these ads. Oh, so we could pay our bills or whatever. It's just like it, what it is that is scary to me because I don't know what to believe. You know, yeah. I don't know what the, I don't know what to like to consider legit. You know, you it doesn't matter what it is. Like, for example, like I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm in the process of like losing some body fat, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'll go on YouTube and I look up best things to eat after workout, you know, to achieve fat loss or to achieve muscle gain or whatever. But like the I, I took a screenshot of it. It's like one video says the benefits of eating avocado after cardio and then the video right under it is why avocados are the worst thing to eat after cardio and it's like i don't know what to believe man like i just damn it's so crazy bro like yo we're, we're bombarded with information and it's like not even good information like uh sure there's inf- good information out there and the the net is an information super highway but if if you're like bogged down with with the pros and the cons, like I don't know, like like the pros, yeah, the pros and the cons, man. I mean, you're gonna have people on both sides, and then maybe just people trying to get click tag clickbait, uh, trying to get clicks because there's a video that's pro this. All right, sure, I'll make one that's con, and you know whatever, try to make up some, some uh, whatever, man, some sort of pseudo research or whatever that make you click into their website so they can show you their ads. To, so that they, they can try to convince you or just even plant the thought or just to get your attention, man. It's all getting your attention. Like, we're, they're all fighting for our attention. That's all it is. And what can I say in these few words to get this person's attention for five minutes, ten minutes or whatever? How, your attention is like the most valuable thing. Your attention is the most valuable thing to all these companies. Yeah, man. Fucking companies, man. Like, your, <laughs> your, your, your attention is your time. You, you, the, the, all these companies value your, the, 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 the value is in your time and what can they feed to you so that you, they can prove, oh yeah, they, uh, so-and-so spends three hours on our website every day. And then so like they have all this data from all these people and they have collected all that into a sheet of paper and they and they tell their advertisers, look, this is what we're our reach. And that's the part of the beauty of the the web, the analytics, in that they know how long you've been watching this, how long, how many, uh, uh, how far into this video have you gotten, what videos are uh, most effective and why. And it's all based on attention, man. And your attention is your time, and and your time is your life. You, that your life is only a certain amount of time, and uh, also only only a certain amount of attention when you're not sleeping and when you're not being focused on something else. 
okay, you're not, you're finished focusing on this thing over here. All right, look over here. Yeah. The uh, avocado is terrible. Trust me. Uh, you don't want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, oh, oh my God, avocado is terrible. Let, let me see what's, what's, what's going on over here. Oh yeah. Uh, check out these ads real quick. <laughs> that hey, it's a machine, man. You know, it's funny, man. Like that to me, that whole approach is how I feel like music has been for the past, like popular music. I feel like mu popular music has been manufactured the way that it is currently for the past like easily i don't know i could remember as far back as like five years you know that it's like this music sounds like it was it was designed specifically to achieve a certain uh you know profitable goal max profits yeah instead of and like for example and i almost feel like damn like like what if you know like for example where hip-hop is today like what if where hip-hop is today is uh, like the result of of um like people making like the super dopest music like the craziest music and not making no money from it but being revered and then you have other people that they make ho horrible music but they market it a certain way that it becomes profitable to like the audience that's like the lowest common denominator you know and then like oh man but like you know if we do too much of this dumb music like the world's gonna suck in the future that's uh you know that's uh that no they they're concerned about the now and okay what's popping now how can we ride this freaking wave that of whatever trend it is okay we got little little so and so all right yeah hell yeah fucking he can throw some words together i don't even care if he mumbles can he can he mumble does he have a voice or does he have sound going through his vocal cords you know if if he can't pronounce correctly yes okay freaking put our hot producer on there and uh and and put on little mumbles and fucking yo we got a product that we could push for for a couple months or whatever and then we get rid of him after the single your your uh your raspy voice as like the guy in control is so accurate okay let's do it <laughs> yeah <It's> like, <laughs> uh cue in uh little mumbles yeah hey, hey nah right now i'm looking on the internet to see if there's a little so-and-so rapper little so-and-so i just want to see if there's a guy named little so-and-so <laughs> no nah, there isn't yet mm, i think we just created him little so-and-so are you ready are you ready to fucking go incognito Nah, man, I can't, bro. You do it. You'll be little so-and-so. Little so-and-so. So, so, so. <laughs> that's it. Man. That's all you say. You so, know? so, so, so. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, you know, you know, man, like, I don't know, bro. Like, uh, at the end of the day, man, like, I, I, I feel like the music that, like, for example, cats that I you know, like myself, um, like, for example, the underground, the underground more, like, wordy as like side of the spectrum of hip hop, I feel like that's gonna age so much better mm. than the other side. Cause like, look, right now we're talking about LP Funk, Funk Crusher Plus, uh, plus, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like we're not even talking about any of his recent stuff, that's, right? Except for that, yes, Run the Jewels is doing brilliantly, and holy shit, I can't believe it. But man, like fucking, uh, 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 uh Funk Crusher Plus, I'll sleep when you're dead. Uh, what uh, what are some of the other ones, man? But just uh, like uh, cancer for cure, you cancer know, cancer for cure. Like it's just like music. I feel like music like that, and th and let this be a message to anyone that's listening. Like I, at any point in time after this is recording, like if you make music and you're considering making like cookie cutter music because you believe that that'll be the easiest way to get to get the most popularity, just be conscientious of like what you're being popular for, you know. Like you can you can be popular, but if you don't want to be known to be like, like just a run of the mill dime a dozen recording artist, because that fast popularity you get, you're gonna like lose that if this next song that you come out isn't gonna be a defining moment like in your career, just a an impactful impression. If you make some bullshit, you're gonna be known for being the guy that makes bullshit, and the other people that come out to your shows. Are gonna be into bullshit, and you know what I'm saying? Like you just want to be a little bit more mindful of the type of stuff you put out into the world. I agree. Um, yeah, yeah, and you don't want to be typecast, and I, you, uh, homies just want to be famous. They just want that popularity, that that internet popularity, fake internet points, and I don't know, man. Sign their life away to, for for for. Uh, for like signing all their fucking uh publishing you know whatever way just for like to be famous and like maybe it's a, the start of some sort of career but i'm like damn like it's like the worst possible way like like the cheapest 
uh, the most disposable. Uh, like, what are your thoughts on like where Miami hip hop is at at the moment? I don't know, man. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't have the luxury to like listen to and enjoy and pick apart a, a lot of new music. Um, it doesn't have to be new. Just like my okay, then not at the moment, but just Miami hip hop. You know, like like now looking back on, you know, your time here in South Florida and being involved in the music scene with Vice City Cipher and Catalyst, and you know, like. Now looking back, like, what are your thoughts on just like Miami hip hop? Uh, I mean, I think Miami. I don't know, man. Like, like every it feels like every state or every like major city has like a, a certain feel to it. Some cities stand out more than others. Um, I mean, I think Miami has a ridiculous amount of talent. Um. And a lot of, uh, I don't know, man, it's, it's, it's like you have a lot of talent, but then you can't really do shows because, I don't know, man, it's hard doing fucking shows out here. And I don't know, man, I, I would say there's a lot of talent. Uh, there's a lot of talent, man. <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> the, 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 the state of hip hop in Miami, there, there's a lot of people that are trying to make it and, and still trying to make it and. And I don't know, man. I mean, it, it, it's hard for me. Like, I didn't grow up around a lot of successful rappers or whatever. Like, maybe people in New York did or whatever uh, growing up in, at a certain time. And, and everybody was getting fucking record deals or whatever. And then, you know, fucking Def Jam. Like, like they'll sign you one day. And then the next day you're in fucking Madison Square Garden or whatever. Uh, I don't know, man. It, it It's like... Like, you really got to, down here, I feel like you really got to do it because you love it. I don't know if, if I'm just talking off t- talking off the cuff and, and not really have a lot of uh, evidence for that. But I don't know, man. I, I think uh, I, I've heard that, that success favors those that are hungry, that are hungry, hungry for it. So you could have multiple people and still have the same op- aspirations. But the one that's hungriest for it, like the other guys that are that are full and 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 not really starving to 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 feed their kid or whatever, or or, or you know maybe they have their own jobs and they're straight and they're secure or whatever. Musically, they're not going to be as hungry. Maybe they do a, a, as an anomaly. But if you're making a a a, a a a straight salary, a good salary, and and uh. And your all your bills are paid for, or whatever, and, or at least you know v- very much so, or whatever. And and you're relatively comfortable, then you're not gonna be, you're not gonna fight as hard as somebody who's like doesn't, who's like freaking still struggling and still believes in themselves and says, man, I'm gonna do this freaking no matter what or whatever. And 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 I don't know, man, that that hungry person is gonna go a lot further than the person who's just content. And God bless them, they're content. It, it it uh it, it like disappoints me a little bit to see artists over time just like give up on their on their dreams man on their aspirations you know like like i feel like there's a few artists out here i'm not going to say who because i don't want to put them out there like that but like i see that a few years ago they had a plan and how the, they'll go about it and then they did not execute that plan and now their conversations on how to go about their music seem more like just a dream, you know? Yeah, that'll be cool, man. That would be cool if I could do that. That would be cool, you know? Like, I don't like the that would be cools, you know? Like, nah, man. If you want to work on this, like, stick to that plan, bro. Drink some coffee, bro, you know? I, I, I agree. Uh, and at the same time, on the flip side of that is... Yeah, uh, as you get older, your life gets full, and and you're and you start uh, uh, adding to your life, and you know you 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 get with somebody, you know you you get married, and then uh, uh, like you gotta you gotta work because you gotta pay bills or whatever, but you're still fucking passionate about this or whatever, and then like soon enough, all the things, all these little things that need to get paid for or whatever, like they they 
they they strangle you or whatever like like i don't know like i'm reminded of like this this part this passage in the bible where where christ is like saying that like he's spreading seeds and then uh like he, he he spread seeds in this one area in this fertile ground but then like they they didn't grow because they got like choked up by the weeds or whatever they got strangled not saying that like having a family or whatever is like weeds like oh you, you know don't do that but i mean just like i don't know man you you have uh you, you end up having wanting to have little uh uh what is it like like luxuries or whatever and then you got to work extra hard to pay for it and then working extra hard means that you're spending extra time whether it's studying or whether it's uh, uh working extra time on that job in order to get more hours in order to pay for that, your fucking car or whatever or or your your fancy ass house or whatever uh when you theoretically you could have settled for for something uh something more cost effective or whatever and then you know all those things are like weeds that just freaking choke you up and and when you could have gotten and like grown and into like something huge like a tree or whatever like something uh it grew into something beautiful uh you know in the sense of like rap or 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 your music or whatever whatever art uh whatever performing art or art or whatever it is that you're passionate about whether it's rock rap whatever i don't know man you as time goes by it, it's almost like and an, i don't know if it's inevitable or whatever or you, if you're just smart about it you play it smart and you you live under your means you 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 can achieve it i mean that's one thing that that i appreciate about my homie uh blueprint in uh in ohio uh is like he he got his degree in like computer science or something like that, and he was working at, with like some big company or whatever doing I, IT tech. I, I don't know, but like it was information technology and like doing some like coding and stuff or whatever. And then so like he, he I don't know, man, he he worked himself into the position where okay, I bought my house, I have the X amount of money saved, I I, I never got married or whatever. Uh, or I haven't gotten married yet or whatever. So it's not like he, he has that, uh, like he has to worry about supporting other people. Uh, and so, and he has been able to focus on uh, uh, on building himself on his art, what he's truly passionate about. He's been able to work himself into that position. And now he's like doing freaking documentaries. He's putting out music, doing collaborations. He's uh, doing beats. He has a podcast. I mean, are we talking about the same blueprint that was that was on that song with Aesop? Like, yes, blueprint, like body slam bows. Oh, okay. that, that's the verse I told him. I was like, yo, that was the the verse that like changed history, it changed history for him because I don't know who Blueprint was, but then like that, uh, it's all alchemy like, on the alchemy song, and I was, yeah, you're all into Ace, and then you're like, yeah, fucking Ace is the is is the shit, yo, and then fucking. Uh, uh, blueprint comes out in his in his. Uh, I, I I forget how it starts. Uh, I walk with immense amount of power, cowards, cower, and with the echo on the verse, and he's like, uh, body slam boas, and when he when he says that, you could picture him, fucking like a like a four hundred pound guy, like holding like a snake that's like a thousand pounds, and then like. Pow! Like fucking in in a ring, like body slamming a fucking huge snake. Uh, I, what was that other song that he did on the RJD two uh, um, so, uh, album? Uh, I mean, he 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 he's in a crew like with RJD two. Soul position. Soul position is like him soul and RJD two. Soul position. Uh, uh, with your eyes and listen. Well, as I resurrect these 26, 26 letters. letters. Damn, that's what's God. up, man. Blueprint, bro. Fuck. Yo, hell yeah, man. And then, like, it's funny. Like, I don't know, man. How did I fucking get connected with him or whatever? Uh, I mean, through through the homie uh, uh, Swamberger. Like, uh, I don't know, man. I, 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 I met Quell at, like, he was down in Fort Lauderdale. I was like, dog, fucking Quell's in Fort Lauderdale. I, I got I, I'm not going to let him be in Fort Lauderdale and me not be there. And then he just did an amazing show in some bar out there or whatever. And then, like, I, I sold him on Catalyst. I'm like, yo, dog, there's this place. Because, I mean, he, he's, like, kind of spiritual in his, in, his, in, his, in his music and stuff and whatever. And I was like, yo, there's a, there's a, there's a church down in Miami that, uh, that they operate. And, and, like, out of the back of a church is, like, a hip-hop event that goes on or whatever. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, that, like, it's like, you know, 
Like there's not, they're not going to censor anybody. There's no censorship or whatever. And they're like, no, you can't say that or whatever. Or even if you're a different religion or whatever, you're welcome to to come and, and share your art or whatever. And then like, I just sold him on it and it's like, he couldn't believe it. And then, so I fucking got, got called down. Uh, and, and Joel Stegeo, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Uh, he was just like a huge fan of, of Quell. He's like, I asked him about it. He's like, oh, what do you think about bringing down Quell here or whatever? He's like, yo, that's, that's my effing Quell. <laughs> I'm effing Quell. And he was like all excited. And then I, and then like fucking the, the homie Quell came down here and, and, and ripped the show and, and we built it, we built a little bit and, uh, just hit it off, man. He's, he's a, he's a good dude, man. I mean, he's, uh. He, he he's on some other level or whatever but like i guess what i'm getting at is he traveled like me being good to him and taking care of him and uh and opening up opportunity for him down here and to meet with other people or whatever as he traveled um uh uh he he went up north to orlando he he was working with swanberger or whatever and then print he's like yo who can do me a show and who can put a, together a show in miami and this is when catalyst and saturday mike live was popping and uh and so, uh, so Swanberger asked Quell, he's like, yo, who's fucking, who's down in Miami that, that could uh, hook up a show for Blueprint? And he's like, yo, the nigga Charlie Fast, man, he fucking hooked me up or whatever. And then so then, like, I don't know, man, fucking uh, Blueprint hits me up out of nowhere. I'm like, holy shit, Blueprint. Like, like, out of nowhere. Like, I remember him opening up for Atmosphere and then at, at, uh, at uh, Revelations or uh, Revolution, Revolution or whatever, yeah, yeah. like uh, up north. And then he opened up for, for Atmosphere and then they were like battling each other. I was like, God damn, this guy is fucking battling Slug. Like to me, it blew my mind. Like, cause like fucking Slug to me with, and the, like the woman with the tattooed hands is like the most brilliant fucking, one of the most brilliant tracks of all time. And this guy's battling him and they're all fucking laughing back and forth. And then it just blew my mind or whatever. And then this guy's calling me. And, uh, and so, yeah, man, I, I fucking set that up or whatever. And then I, I, whenever I meet somebody that I, that I, that I admire, that I admire their, their, their music or their artwork or whatever, I try to like, like I ask, I, like I, I, I try to get into it with them to see, you know, how did they get where they got or whatever. And so like, I, I just to, so I could break down, okay, this is how this person approached this thing and then achieved this and, and, uh, this is how they write or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that, that, that interests me about them or whatever. So, uh, uh, yeah, man, I don't know, man, just, I, uh, that's how I, I met up with Blueprint and that's one of the things that I, that I appreciate about him is that he's put himself into a position even after getting his degree, his college degree and working in the world, uh, doing IT or whatever he was doing was able to say, okay, I'm saving up for this. I'm, I, I'm going to buy my house. Uh, I'm going to, uh, have enough money that I could fucking do something for it. Like just do stuff for a year. And he's just been freaking making music and living off his music and touring. Like that's what he's been doing. Just going across the country and traveling with his, with uh DJ rare groove and you know, whoever else he's traveling with or whatever. Uh, and he's a, he, yo, he, Pren is a, is an amazing freaking producer, amazing lyricist, uh, ne won't disappoint or whatever. I don't know, man. But, um, but that's, yeah. That's wild, man. It's crazy how like low key, you know, like how Miami bring, like how Miami is still very much in tune with like the ill, mm -hmm. like thought provoking hip hop. As much as as it does enjoy like the club scene and the party scene, you the know, like the booty music and and yeah, I mean, it's really hard to not enjoy any type of music when you got some like like a bunch of beautiful women just enjoying <laughs> themselves, like you know, <laughs> enjoying themselves. Yeah, for real. But like, man, that's awesome, bro. With Quell, man, and like with Blueprint, and it's true, bro. Like, listen, just because of you know, like a rapper raps, it's like, yo, try to find a way to like think long term income outside of music that way that it'll enable you to focus on your music you know mm -hmm. I, I think to a to a certain degree that is the blueprint <laughs> you know what i'm saying I, I think to a certain degree i i'm i'm living my life as like the long uh the long bet where uh I, i'm jumping from plateau to plateau and trying to achieve something where i can <laughs> I can, by achieving this thing, I could free myself to do what I really want to do, whatever. And at the same time, as time goes on, my, my kids are going to be uh, more independent and stuff and need less 
immediate attention like complete attention for 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 uh like i don't know man kids need a lot of attention but as they grow older they become less less completely dependent to whatever and you're i like to think that you'll be freer to like do stuff that you really want to do like creatively or whatever yeah man i mean uh i hope so too man for like myself you know um but i do have high hopes for people that approach their dreams the way that like that way that the way that you do you know like you don't lose sight of your priorities but then at the same time like oh that's me at the same time you don't lose sight of your priorities but at the same time like you don't lose sight of your dreams either you know yeah. and, and then the universe the universe provides man you know let me ask you do, uh, do we have enough time or yeah yeah we still got a little bit let me ask you what, what you think about this i don't know if you ever heard this back in the days not too too well like uh the early vcc days um when uh when uh yeah like you had more recently appeared in in catalyst and i was like yo descendant <laughs> and uh, yeah, i still knew you as descendant he's like oh yeah no nah, i'm not going by descendant anymore uh, I, I, uh what are you going by oh i'm going by my, by my name art marrera i'm like art marrera <laughs> anyways that's not there nor here but um <laughs> so like i i spent a lot of time with h during that time h2o uh shout outs to h2o vice city cypher co-founder along with myself um and then so we were talking we were talking and we were just talking about miami mcs or whatever and then so he's like yo and let's call this other rapper uh rapper xyz yo you think fucking rapper xyz is the future Doc. Art Marrera is the future. And I was like, weren't for real? Like, because, you know, I don't know, like that you hadn't dropped any anything of significance. You know, that was before the Man on the Moon and, and all that stuff or whatever. And I guess you had been showing him some stuff or whatever. I'm like, damn, that's like a, a big thing for, for, for anybody to see. And then somebody like H2O that, that like I look up to as an MC and, and that taught me a lot of stuff and pre stage presence and projecting projecting projection and and like all this stuff for him to say yo you think X, this rapper xyz is the future man the art marrera is the future i don't know what 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 is what is that what 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 does that bring to your mind um you know man i love h2o man i've known h2o for a long time i've known him since like back when i was battling in high school i've known h2o and for for a while man like well like that statement is of course, it's like, it's like flattering, you know. It's like, damn, that's wild, man. Hearing someone like, of to me, H two O will always be like a legend, you know. In Miami, mm -hmm. to me, H two O was like a legend, you know. Um, so to hear that come from him, it's like, it's gratifying, bro. Um, like, I wish that him and I were in more converse, in more better contact than we are now mm -hmm. um we did attempt to like make music at, at, at some point mm -hmm. i did perform a few shows with him back when i was rocking with him more on like some songs that we had mm -hmm. um and like you know man i just hope that oh obviously i'm not where some people may have thought that i would be in my career in my music career um and i and i didn't make the best decisions of a few years ago that resulted in you know whatever me getting locked up and all that mm -hmm. um but i hope that the music that i release did not like disappoint this mm -hmm. like foresight that h2o mm. has i mean i don't know if maybe he still feels that way or maybe not anymore mm -hmm. um I, I will tell you i will tell you this um I mean, even even through your through your tribulations, your trials, um, just trying to uh, trying to make moves and whatever. So uh, I don't know. I feel like you've consi you you've been consistent in like what you want to do and who who you see yourself as, and continue to to push forward towards that uh towards that ultimate goal self self independence financial independence doing what you love i don't know i i really think that that you're on the that you're on the path to that i like and i've told you 
like on text or whatever that like what you're putting out now is like you're digging up gold from the ground like these new tracks yo gold 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 bars or whatever but if nobody like the, the that gold needs to be like framed in order people to really see holy shit this is gold uh and then there'll be in demand or whatever uh and many people uh they like fall short from like really creating that gold or whatever or being able to do it get them to a get a get to a certain point where they can do it like a machine like have a routine okay i'm fucking generating more gold and generating more gold or whatever and like you're 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 working and, and doing your you're you're making your beats and, and and your your original music and and your writing and uh and being consistent about it even though even if you feel like bro you know i don't feel like doing anything uh or like i feel sluggish or whatever that you're still creating that gold um i i really think that that your trajectory is is really going to pay off and if if not i mean I, I, whether it's financially or, or, or whatnot i i'm i'm believing that that you, you will be like financially independent and like doing this what you love or whatever um i'm gonna call you and like yo charlie i'm rich yo look at all this money i got to send you a screenshot like just me like with all this money like doing snow angels in like a bed of like hundreds <laughs> <laughs> yo i told you man i'll be spending that hot fire i, I thought i told you <laughs> hey i appreciate that charlie man like for real bro like you know and i'm glad that you know that you um were able to come through today bro and and bang out this podcast with me and uh this will be documented, you know what I'm saying? For like the rest of our lives, it'll be here, man. And I'm hoping that that uh, more great things come to like to you and to your family, bro. And you know, and I appreciate you letting me know that conversation that you had with H2O, you know. Um, mm. and H, if you're listening, man, you know, I hollered at you about coming on this podcast, man. All right, just just let me know, you know the, what I'm saying? The H2O podcast. <laughs> Nah, well, if you want to have a glass of water with a medianoche, yeah, I guess. Yes, where's my medianoche, man? I was expecting a medianoche, like, I was, I was like fully prepared. You to bring one. Oh, I was like, that's the way it works, you know. Like, like they come, they bring the podcast. I'm the one with the, I mean, the the medianoche. I I got the podcast. You know? I, I, I was about to like, if I had enough time, I would have made sandwiches for the both of us, and then like came came through here or whatever. But yeah, time permitting or whatever. Nah, nah, you got a pot roast like like the pot roast it. simmering in the in the slow cooker, man. It, I, I I I would uh, uh <laughs> I would uh, encourage you to get a slow cooker up in this piece. I got a I got a you uh, got a hot plate. Yeah, I got a hot plate, but know? not a slow cooker. No, a slow cooker, you you can just set fucking put up put some chicken breasts in there with like some orange juice or a little wine or whatever. Let it let it cook over overnight. Uh, I mean, your, your apartment is gonna smell like food or whatever, yeah. and I guess in a good way. You got a fridge here? Uh, that little thing over there is the fridge. Dog, I don't know, man. You, you eat meat for tacos or something? I don't know, man. I I I, I would encourage anybody to to get a, a crock pot because you, you you set it overnight and it's like not a whole lot of time to to prepare or whatever, and then you wake up in the morning and you have fucking food for like the whole day. I don't know. I, and I, like, for the whole day and then plus, like for multiple days. Like I, I have a little system uh, uh going on right here. Like but but it did it did occur to me to get that slow cooker. I just don't want all my clothes smelling like food all the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I just cook a little some some and but um <clears throat> but yo, with that being said, man, um we're gonna go ahead and, and, and wrap up this podcast episode. Uh this was episode twenty seven. Twenty seven of the Maybe I Know Podcast, my man Charles Fast. Yeah. My name is Art Morera. Uh, the Transit City pro uh, Transit City is still on all streaming platforms at the moment. Um, Where Good Grief is out now. I just got a tattoo of a Kokuyu on my hand. <laughs> so now that little bug that kicked it with me that one time, we can hang out a little longer. Yes. So shout out to Jump. And uh, we out of here, man. Charles Fast, Art Morera. Word. Peace. Yeah. Peace. Medianoche. 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 Podcast, 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 podcast. Medianoche. 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 Mediano